What's up, everybody, and welcome back to the channel. 400% infiltration slash dungeons are some of the most fun I've had with this game since launch. It's an awesome, awesome addition to the experience. It's also something that was given to us with the October 10th patch alongside Ultimate Freyna. Now, it's in your best interest to get yourself a decent build together to be able to do these dungeons with relative ease, since most of the new mods, which were also added on October 10th, are also available through these dungeons. These dungeons, of course, cycle every day, so you want to give yourself an opportunity to unlock as many of these as you can by running those dungeons. Of course, you can get some of these from other places. You can also combine and get lucky and get them that way, but the dungeons are the most straightforward way for you to unlock this stuff. Now, the build that I'm going to show you today is for Ultimate Freyna. I'm using Ultimate Freyna here, as you can see, but it also works for Freyna since it doesn't use any of the two new Transcendent mods. The build centers around Contagion, and this is perfectly suited for not only the 400% dungeons, but also Spec Ops. So if you are still leveling up and you don't want to do the 400%, you just want to go like super fast with the Spec Ops, which is still a little bit faster than actually leveling in the 400% dungeons, then this build will work perfectly for that as well. Now, in the case of the people that just want to take a screenshot and run, I'm just going to leave it like this and you can go ahead and take a screenshot and you can go. If you want to stick around, then I'll explain some of the nuance behind some of the choices that I've made here. Now, first things first, my objective with this particular build was that I wanted to make the abilities as fast off cooldown as possible. And I also obviously wanted to make them hit as hard as possible so that you didn't need multiple ticks on any of the enemies that spawn and essentially one tick would kill pretty much everything. Of course, there are yellow bars and so on that run around inside these 400% dungeons as well plus you have the two bosses at the end not just one that you would usually have in a dungeon so we also have to keep that in mind so again i try to ramp the damage up to a point where it does significant damage against those enemies as well even though yes you will still have to use like a gun or something like that to finish them off so as mentioned we're using contagion of course and then in terms of survivability i only really use hp amplification and i use time distribution both of these give me additional hp uh, hp amplification actually takes a little bit of your shield away but that's fine because of the sheer uh, insane amount of hp that you get from it and that in combination with some decent external components is going to give you more than enough survivability inside these dungeons as mentioned of course the normal enemies basically present no danger and the two bosses at the end you can just fight them pretty much the same way that you would fight one boss and kind of like be sneaky and move around and that sort of thing and just use the geometry to avoid them shooting you nonetheless you're going to be dealing so much damage that these encounters aren't going to last that long in any case and all the while while you are fighting enemies as well as while you are fighting the bosses trash ads still do spawn and these trash ads still drop hp uh, regen as well so you can just keep on getting yourself topped up with that and that should present no problem for you in terms of survivability failing that if uh, this is a swing cell right here so if you really do see yourself suffering you can of course give yourself some other additional survivability options here whether you want to stick some defense in there you can be crazy and you could put hp collected in there or something like that uh, that that that's also of course an option and uh you know that's just going to give you a bunch of hp back again as well as uh, you know as soon as you kill something but again like i said all the footage that you're seeing in the background is running with this exact setup and survivability really wasn't that much of an issue then uh we also want to be increasing our range as, as much as possible now i will be the first one to say this that in the 400 percent dungeons you don't technically need that much range because the enemies are so you know dense and there's so many of them that the spreadability of your toxin is really not an issue and you will actually have no problem with the toxin spreading from enemy to enemy that being said, I want this build to function equally well in this 400% dungeon setup, but also in Spec Ops. So in the case of Spec Ops, you do want to have a little bit more range because the enemies are more spread apart. And something like maximum range absolutely helps you because that actually helps you hit like an entire area, basically, instead of just, you know, it taking a while to essentially spread across. Now, uh, you lose a little bit of skill power modifier here, but it really doesn't matter because we're going to be juicing it up so much with other things that, you know, that's not a case. Well, uh, we're also going to be using skill expansion because this gives us even more range. Now, these two together pretty much just, you know, get you almost to maximum. So we have like a 11.5 meter radius on our third ability, Putrid Venom. And we have like over here, we have like a 11.5 meter as well on our uh, venom trauma so both of these will cover huge areas and basically infect a whole bunch of stuff 
and uh, we're also uh, using nimble fingers over here to start dropping our cooldowns now this is one of the things that you want especially in a 400 percent dungeon is you want snappy cooldowns so you want to be able to drop these abilities and then move drop move drop move because as soon as you clear a pack of enemies there might be another pack that spawns a little bit further back and having your abilities ready to go means you can already just drop the poison on them in the back there which helps you just finish the dungeon out quicker this also helps you when you're doing spec ops when you're moving from area to area because essentially what you can start doing is when you're in a nice flow is you can have one area you can drop your one and your three and then immediately start moving for the next area and as soon as you get to the next area the previous area most of them will be dead already plus both of your abilities are off cooldown and you can just go again so this means that your one ability is on a 4.5 second cooldown and your third ability is on an 8.1 second cooldown all the way down from 20 seconds which is super super snappy and very awesome now basically for the rest of the mods here everything is going to be about ramping up our damage so we have two staples uh that you should be using on freyna in any case and this has been the case since before ultimate freyna and that is focus on tech and focus on toxic and that's because of course she is a toxic descendant but also the abilities that matter from her venom trauma uh, putrid venom and venom baptism are all three tech abilities so you know it's kind of like a no-brainer what we do then is we also throw in two of the new mods which were added on october 10th this is toxic amplification and tech amplification both of these do basically the same thing as focus on tech and focus on toxic they increase the two skill powers you know uh, as well so in the case of toxic obviously it increases toxic in the case of tech it increases tech uh, both of their modifiers while here skill power and here skill power modifier in the case of tech but then what is important is both of these actually completely tank your skill critical hit rate but that's okay because freyna is technically speaking not a critical hit uh, descendants she has very low blaze uh, crit hit and crit hit uh damage and so therefore this helps us to focus rather into the damage itself instead of critting with it which is exactly what you want for her because you want those dots to be consistent and hit you know hard and you don't really want to care about crits then we are also last but certainly not least putting in decimator now decimator as you kill enemies you will stack skill power modifier and this stacks up to 10 stacks which means that you can get an additional 50 percent of a skill power modifier there which is kind of super super sexy now because you're killing so many enemies you'll always be running around with 10 stacks so that's really not going to be a problem and that's pretty much it this is an insanely fucking slick setup for basically just breezing through spec ops and the 400 percent dungeons uh as mentioned once you get to the bosses at the end and we're going to talk about weapons just now uh this is not going to be sufficient to kill the bosses fast you can of course by attrition just keep hitting them with the poison and they will eventually fucking die but we can use weapons to kind of like just make it go a little bit faster now for me i kind of like oscillate between two options here i use secret garden because secret garden is almost like made for freyna it's a fantastic weapon for freyna and if you are building gun freyna which is a build that i'll probably be able to push out tomorrow i'm struggling to get the mod that i need to drop and i'm working on it as much as i can but i've had no luck so far uh the build is basically ready i just need the fucking mod to drop so you know shoot me now but uh secret garden is phenomenal right and i'll just flash my secret garden build here as well uh this is just a really Really, really good weapon all around it doesn't have to be used by freyna because it has such a high crit hit rate and crit hit damage and then with these mods on it's just gonna absolutely fucking you know uh slay shit uh, and then what i also do is i use eternal willpower which is in my opinion i mean there are really two purple weapons that are worth putting fucking catalyst into uh the one you should know very well that is of course the lmg but eternal willpower is also really really good you actually see me in the footage you Using this a lot uh my eternal willpower isn't even completely done yet there's two more mods that i have to fucking finish up on this but this thing absolutely fries and just completely and utterly fucking kill shit plus both of these weapons you can when you use your fourth ability actually deal quite a bit of damage as well what i like about this setup is when your fourth ability is available you can use it and you can deal a bunch of damage with it otherwise if it's on cooldown don't worry about it because you're still going to be just absolutely frying shit with both of these weapons for our reactor of choice we're using of course toxic mechanics because we are toxic tech with uh with freyna and then let me just move my face over here uh i've got skill cooldown and tech skill power boost ratio on here i think as long as you have at least tech skill power boost ratio or toxic 
toxic skill power boost ratio that's good because that's going to give you a nice additional bump and damage and then whatever else your build needs so if you're lacking a little bit of range get that on you if you're lacking a little bit of cooldown get that on you but this is pretty much the two choices that i would make you of course don't need uh you know colossus damage anything like that because we're not using this to fight colossi so this is kind of like the setup that you're looking for now if you can get yourself an ultimate reactor with like a secret garden mounting or something like that on then that's even fucking better but uh this purple reactor with 40 140 percent versus 160 is still you know more than enough to actually get the job done and uh that that in combination with the right weapons and so on will carry you through to victory last but certainly not least our external components you have tons of options here of course uh there are things like for example uh you know you can you can use some of the actual like sets like for example let me just find it here uh where the fuck is my i mean you could go venom essence if you want to if you want to give your guns a little bit more you know sticking power and actually just deal some damage with them slayer is also super super decent on on frena because it gives you that nice little 26.1 percent and i mean it's not that little let's be honest of skill power there but what i like to do is i just like to stack a bunch of survivability uh you know components on here which means that i never ever have to worry about actually going down while i'm doing these events so or while i'm doing these dungeons so i pretty much just use like you know max hp and things like that just stack as much of that max mp is super important and i quickly want to talk about this because something that you're going to notice is that i don't have mp collector on you so you might be wondering like holy shit dude how are you are you not running out of like mana as you're running around and there's two reasons why you're not first of all you're killing so many enemies and they keep dropping blue pods that you're gonna be freshening up on mana like the entire time even while you are fighting the bosses your mana will never go past 50 percent because trash ads and shit like that still spawn and you can still keep your mana up the same thing is true in spec ops so it's really not an issue with mana maintenance and everything like that so uh i that's the reason i for a while ran it because it's kind of like an auto include in skill power builds because it's just like you know you put it in and then you never worry about mana again but yeah it's just definitely not necessary yeah and i found more use in having something like time distribution in which gave me a little bit of additional survivability in the hp side but also gave me some skill cooldown which was which was really dope but what does absolutely help if you go down that road and if you don't use mp collector is make sure that you at least have like a purple or so max mp on your sensor that will absolutely help out especially when you're leveling because remember if you reset down to one level one or level five or whatever the hell then your stats also crunch down right and then your mana pool is relatively small and maybe then for the first couple of levels you might have a little bit of mana you know issues but that being said as you can see here i'm using like a you know like a little fucking mixture of stuff here of course be sure to use annihilation memory uh in your memory slot this is the only piece of gear in the game that has a higher hp roll than any other piece for it i don't know if it's a mistake and a misprint or something like that but annihilation memory this one has 646 where all the other pieces usually have i believe in like the 400s or something like that so like for example here if you look at this invader memory this has 484 on the memory so annihilation memory is the only one that has 646 so this is obviously a good choice to always use if you're just trying to stack survivability so max hp off that is nice and then you can see i'm just basically stacking all the resistances right so i've got fire i've got chill i've got electric i've got toxins so yeah i could juice more damage out of the build for sure by using you know something like slayer or whatever but the point is this is just giving me uh you know all the survivability that i need so that i don't have to worry about you know using more mods to give myself more survivability and that the ones that i'm using over here hp amplification and time distribution are more than enough to help me survive and that's it for the video thank you so much for watching especially if you made it this far like i said i am busy putting on the finishing touches to the gun build i've just been really really unlucky with mod drops i don't understand and why uh, i think i used up all my good luck before in previous instances of the game where usually people would be struggling for days on end to get a mod to drop and i would get it the first time so i guess this is my comeuppance now but as soon as i get that mod to drop the ball will be out as well my my hope is i'm going to be grinding it today so my hope is i'll be able to drop it tomorrow but this is going to do you good in 400 percent infiltrations as well as spec ops if you're still busy gearing up your frainer this is going to make you just zoom through that content but let me know 
know what's the thing that you enjoy the most about the October 10th patch? Is it also the 400% infiltrations? Do you like the new uh, vendor that we have? Uh, being able to buy capacity upgrades from that vendor is also super damn dope. I'm looking forward to seeing what other stuff they could put into that vendor later on in the game. But other than that, it's just super important to me that you have a fantastic morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are in the world. Till next video, fucking cheers.